Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, lecture 15.2, The Problems with Private Prisons. So, as laid out in previous uh, presentations, there are two types of prisons, or two major types of prisons. We have state-run prisons, and these are the majority of pres prisons in the United States. They are heavily regulated, uh, and... Uh, this regulation uh, regulates guard safety as well as prison safety. Uh, prison employees are state employees, and that's important to note because uh, most uh, state employees do tend to have unions. And uh, unions, uh, if you don't know much about unions, some people don't, um, they are organizations that negotiate contracts for employees, and they also... Uh, do a lot to promote the safety of employees and the safety of people in facilities. Now, um, prison guard unions probably aren't super helpful in terms of protecting prison, uh, prisoners, but they do maintain a certain degree of regulation and oversee a certain degree of regulation. And any additional regulation over prisoners generally can probably be seen as another layer of safety for prisoners. Uh, so that is to be noted. Corporate prison prisons, on the other hand, or private prisons, on the other hand, um, is a relatively new model of prison prisons. Uh, they really have taken off since the late 1990s, and they are on the rise. They have less accountability, less oversight, and they have different objectives than state prisons had have. State prisons largely have the objective of serving the state, holding prisoners, and doing what the legal system says to do. And while corporate prisons do uh, serve that purpose, they have the additional purpose, which is the first purpose of any corporation, which is to make money, because they are a capitalist venture. That's what capitalist ventures do. So, um... It is important to look into uh, percentages of prison prisoners in uh, corporate-owned facilities. Uh, so state prisoners, so prisoners who have violated and are put in prison for state laws, are uh, seven percent of those state prisoners are in corporate facilities. Eighteen percent of federal prisoners are in uh, corporate facilities. Um, Immigration detainee facilities are 75% corporate owned and corporate run. And that is especially troubling because it is incredibly difficult for sociologists and other social scientists to study uh, immigration detainee facilities because they basically keep us out. So, um, yeah, that's a big area of concern. And we can't talk much about it because not much is known. Uh, it's troubling. And then... Uh, the number of local jails in Louisiana and Texas that are corporate uh, owned and run, that is not really known. That's a, not a point of uh, public knowledge, which is also, you know, disturbing. It's disturbing whenever anything like that where um, people from the general public who may commit a crime uh, are put there uh, and then we're not allowed to know about what happens to them that's that's troubling in a democratic society approximately 150 private prison prison facilities exist nationwide this includes both state and federal prisons and uh, those are uh, present in 28 states uh, this trend is on the rise and favored by decision makers in the Department of Justice include, including our current Attorney General Jeff Sessions is in favor of uh, growing uh, corporate-owned prisons. And uh, this is potentially linked to increased violence and human rights violations within uh, those privately run prisons. Because again, they, are, they exist to make money. They are companies, just like McDonald's exists to make money. So let's talk about that profit motive. So, state-run prisons uh, make a profit, but they do so less aggressively than private prisons do. Uh, because, again, private prisons are designed to make a profit. It's their primary objective. Uh, private prisons are paid, just like state prisons, to house each inmate. So, they're paid a certain number of dollars 
from the home state of that prison prisoner uh, to um, to house that prisoner and they're paid the same amount of money whether they give them good food or bad food whether they provide them health care whether there are enough prison guards to keep things safe right so uh, if you're running a corporate prison and you want to maximize profits the way you would do that is to take things away from prisoners and they also find other ways to profit from the inmates aside from that stipend that they get per prisoner um, and we'll talk about that a little bit on the next slide uh, Davis states uh, in, a, in a pretty um, meaningful statement that the prison industrial complex is fueled by privatization the raw material is prisoners industry will do what it can to guarantee a steady supply so what does that mean it means that the prison system especially the private system is geared toward pe getting people in prison is geared toward keeping people in prison and is not oriented toward rehabilitating individuals or fixing our communities to keep crime from happening, right? Um, so how do they profit? Well, uh, here is a list of some of the companies, not all of the companies, but some of the companies that used prison labor in the 1990s. Um, and we have reason to believe that there are additional uh, companies doing uh, jobs in our prison and our prison systems and these are people not that these aren't the corporations that run those private prisons mind you these are the corporations that use prison labor so what they do is um, the prisoner is effectively sold to the corporation right so uh, their their labor is sold to the corporation for the right to use that labor right and then that money goes in the profit pocket of the private uh, prison company and then these other corporations um, then get that very cheap prison um, labor and so the minimum and just about average price of a prisoner that it the, what the prisoner is paid by uh, the outside corporation is about can range from 86 cents to three dollars and 45 cents per day not per hour but per day and these are um, 2017 uh, prices by the way not 1990s prices so Dow Chemicals the cosmetic company and everything else they they use prison labor like this Johnson & Johnson who makes cosmetics and food and a lot of other things ortho -phar pharmaceuticals who makes probably many of the pharmaceuticals in your medicine cabinet dial soap famous Amos cookies AT&T Vita Pro Foods which makes uh, pet food and they also make um, some um, they make uh, health food stuff like your organic whatevers and uh, health food. Nestle Chocolate, Ace Hardware, Sodexo, the cafeteria company um, where that uh, provides the food and the catering on many college campuses. Now it should be noted that Sodexo, this was in the 1990s was present there, Sodexo actually got a lot of flack from college students in the early 2000s and to the best of our knowledge they no longer uh, use uh, prison labor or deal with prisons in any way and that's because students stood up and said enough is enough so that's a testament to what a social movement can do Polaroid company, Hewlett Packard company, RJ Reynolds, the tobacco company Verizon, how many of you have Verizons in your pockets right now? I used to, I don't use them anymore, it has nothing to do with prisons um, Ameritech which is another phone and internet company and Wacken Hut slash G4S they're a military and police services equipment company not only do they sell their products to the prisons but they also have military equipment made in prisons and being used by our American soldiers which there are a couple layers of um, 
morality problems happening there. And that's the end of the show. I forgot to make a personal note of mine there. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions on this, and I look forward to our conversations.